Hi guys, welcome to the Islamic Inheritance Distribution, the 2021 version. It is with amazement and great sadness actually that I make this video because Muslim apologists still can't get themselves to be honest and acknowledge that there's a problem with the inheritance distribution calculation in the Quran. Now there's many, many examples of different mistakes in the census in the Quran and those regarding the distribution of inheritance are no exception and have been recognized for centuries. Now in the past I have demonstrated, explained and presented different approaches towards the many problems, always coming to the same result. But still, there are Muslim apologists who will not acknowledge reality and in 2021 we are still facing the same dishonest denial and bigotry. Now looking at the inheritance distribution, I'm spoiled for choice. Now out of the dozens of mistakes, only in these few commands, I will focus on one of them and do this thoroughly. I will not only demonstrate the mistake regarding basic distribution, but I'll actually apply the instructions to a real life scenario to nail this down once and for all. Now taking the instructions straight from the Quran, I will try and explain what exactly is this mistake, what makes it a mistake, and is there a fix? So let's, let's quickly create a scenario. Muslim parents have a son. Now this son gets married and he and his wife have three daughters. He goes and does something stupid and gets killed in the process. So he leaves behind his parents, his wife and their three daughters. And there exists no last will. Looking at the commands regarding the inheritance distribution in the Quran, we get instructions. Like in the order of their appearance, we see that number one, the daughters, two thirds of the estate of what he leaves. Now that seems easy enough, until you apply the numbers that is. Allah suddenly is neither all knowing nor all wise. So if I take the contents of the Quran seriously, well then the Quran is the literal word of a perfect God and should be inerrant i.e. without any mistakes. And I think every Muslim will agree with this. It should also be impossible to change the contents or words in the Quran. I think every Muslim will agree with this too. Now taking these premises into consideration, let's take an assumed estate of let's say well, $240,000, dollars, pounds, euro, whatever, just to have something tangible. So now if I take chapter 4 of the Quran and take sentence 11 and apply the part relevant to the three daughters, the distribution of the inheritance is two thirds of what he leaves, i.e. the estate. Now this is not exactly Rain Man mathematics, but fourth grade arithmetic for kids. So anyone should be able to follow along while I demonstrate the process. So what we do is we take the 240,000, divide this by 3 which gives us 80,000 and then I multiply this by 2 which gives us 160,000. That gives me two-thirds of the estate, 160,000. That wasn't difficult was it? So we have established that according to the instructions in the Quran, the three daughters receive a total of 160,000, which they need to divide between them, which is a two-third portion of the estate. So we'll keep the 160,000 up here. Next, we do the same for the mother, where we just, just take the estate, 240,000, divide it by six, which is 40,000 to get us this one-sixth. That's not difficult either. Now we do the same for the father because it says in the Quran, the literal word of a perfect God, one sixth to each of the two because he had children, the three daughters. So we put 40,000 for the mother here and 40,000 for the father. Now finally, apply the sentence for the wife where it says in the next sentence, if you have children, then for them of what you leave an eighth. So the wife gets 240,000 divided by eight, 30,000. So let's add that to the list. Now finally, 
we add everything up and take the 160,000 plus the 40 plus the 40 plus the 30,000 for the wife and we get a total of 270,000. What? No. The estate consists of 240,000. And the Islamic God instructs us to distribute 270,000. Whoops. So, obviously we have a problem here. Now, over a hundred years ago, an expert in Oriental studies looked up these problems and he went to the manuscripts of Khwarizmi and looked at what he had come up with a thousand years ago. And this is a mess. Now, Khwarizmi used arithmetic and the algebraic functions that the old Sumerians and Greeks had already come up with and tried to apply that to calculating the costs of manumitting slaves and how to distribute the inheritance according to the Quran. So this Heinrich Wieleitner in his book on Khwarizmi analyzes and then explains quite a few of the really weird calculations the old scholar had performed and who had even gone so far as to come up with his own rules and instructions to make things work. They didn't. Now, please don't be mistaken, he did not use these, uh, this, this algebraic notation. He still used prose to describe this. Now, if we go and consult what was published by, by Brill, well, we find a huge list of scholars who have contributed here. And we find the clear indication that inheritance, as is the case for all FIC or jurisprudence, has adapted to the changing times in social, political and economic developments based on the tribal traditions originally of the 7th century, which place the male descendant at the top as priority number one. Now we learn that Islam simply followed what was custom at the time, but placing women a bit lower than some of the contemporary examples in other ideologies and civilizations. Now, the distribution itself seems rather arbitrary, as parents can inherit substantially more than their own children or grandchildren even. Now, the problem of faulty instructions in the Quran this became apparent quite a bit later, and the solution of this proportionate reduction, the al-awl, was introduced. Now, the Sunnah does not help here, since Muhammad did not mention any oversubscription or all. Do all scholars agree with this all approach? No, they don't. Regardless of whether you take Ibn Abbas, Ibn Kathir, Maududi or Al-Hamadani, there is no real agreement or consensus. And none of this helps us solve the problem I demonstrated earlier. So we are stuck with the contradictions, mistakes and inconsistencies just in these few sentences. But what happens when we use 21st century technology and enter the numbers of this particular scenario into something Islam scholars have developed, an Islamic Sharia compliant inheritance calculator? Well, <laughs> something amazing happens. The calculators react differently or not but always depending on rules defined by human beings, not a god. And they differ depending on what madhab, in other words, what kind of a line or what sect or subsect you belong to or you are selecting. Now the scholars, i.e. the human beings, defined the Sharia and took the literal word of their god as only a mild suggestion, largely ignoring the instructions balancing the numbers to come up with a human solution, based on the words of the Quran, but not strictly following them. They all point out that the total of 100% has exceeded and reduce the distribution ratios by an amount X, as is suggested by something Islamic jurisprudence that is decided on by human beings like you and me, is called our A modern day Muslim, I'm not sure if he's a scholar or not, a doctor something, he runs us through it, and he explains it step by step. Now, he crosses out the words of his God and replaces the instructions with his own, thereby changing the words of the Quran. Now, his calculation is very different from what the Quran stipulates. He quickly realizes that there is a mathematical mistake, and the first thing he does is he crosses out the instructions by his God. So, the 24 has to go and is replaced by a 27. 
he doesn't even care about the brothers anymore, since it would make matters even worse. He then runs us through the revised calculation step by step. Now, if I now follow his methodology and calculate the updated ratios based on the estate of 240,000, which we decided on earlier, we get the following. So the three daughters get 140 something. The parents don't receive 40, but only 35,000. But the wife is being considered here by receiving almost 27,000. Now, if I tidy this up a bit and add the numbers, I arrive at 240,000, the estate that is available, nicely distributed thanks to simple arithmetic. But we have a gigantic problem here. Remember, the Islamic God commands that three daughters receive 160,000. What humans have calculated using the proportional adjustment method, the owl, amounts to 140 odd something. Now, let me make this very clear. The Quran, allegedly the word of the Islamic God, the literal word of the Islamic God, says that women, more than two, inherit two-thirds of what their father has left for them. Now, if the estate is 240,000, well, let's say dollars, that means 240,000 divided by three multiplied by two is $160,000. If I listen to human scholars or Sharia-compliant calculators, well, the three daughters receive less, around 140,000. So the Islamic God says 160,000, Islamic scholars say 140,000. So who's right? Is the Quran inerrant? Is the Islamic God inerrant? Is the Quran clear and everything explained unchangeable? Who decides whether or not an obedient Muslim goes to heaven or hell, God or a scholar? Obviously, you need to do what a God tells you to do. But what if that is impossible? What if the Islamic God is mistaken? Is it for you, the Muslim, to decide when and where to tell your God he's wrong? Allah, 160,000. Scholar, 140,000. Who is right? Who decides? Now, I'm just reporting the facts. It's not my fault. I'm quoting and describing. And I swear, I did not come up with any of this. So don't blame me for doing what the Quran says we should do, and that is ponder and reflect. And that's what I've just done. Thank you for your time and see you in another video on one of my channels. Bye.